The Mavs playing well. No Luka, no problem. Chris Dapps, Porzingis. KP had 38 points and 12 rebounds. That is his second consecutive 35.10 rebound game. Jalen, do you think that sort of KP being able to be the first option on offense can unlock him when Luka comes back and they play together later in the season? Well, he's a perfect example of when you're confident you're, that your confidence can be high when you know that you're going to be featured. And there are a lot of players in the league like that where when their role shifts, depending on what they're asked to do, because there's a lot of this happening in the league where you go from being the best player on your team, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Chris Paul when he joined James Harden, Paul George when he joined Russell Westbrook, to being the second best player. And then as you start to get a little older, like a Boogie Cousins when he gets back, or you're later in your career like a Dwight Howard when you're like the seventh or eighth player, that reinventing yourself is what gives you staying power. As a young player for Porzingis, you get a chance to team up with Luka, and all of a sudden he takes it to a level of top ten dynamic that none of us saw coming this year. Mm. And so you coming off an injury, you was the number one option in New York, you go from being featured like he was last night to you got to get in where you fit in, and you should because Luka is that deal. So now all of a sudden when he's not out there, those plays that they was running for him, you getting those opportunities to your strength. You saw them run a pin down for him against Miles Turner. Yep. You saw the high pick and roll pop against Miles Turner. And so those are now the kind of actions that as a coaching staff, Rick Carlisle is going to say, okay, so we need to adapt to featuring Luka, but also making Kristaps feel like we're giving him a chance to eat. And that's going to be a great balance for them to juggle going forward because like Memphis, they're a terrific young dynamic duo. Absolutely. I think this this is the young dynamic duo that has the most potential to be great in the future. But we're also going to move on to the Boston Celtics. After a win last night against the Hawks, they've won seven of eight games. They're so close to the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. But the Raptors are always red hot. But my question for you is this. When we hear about the Celtics, we always hear about trade rumors. They need to upgrade the big position. Maybe Clint Capella is someone that interests them. But with this team and this momentum that they have, do they need to remix the roster to make a playoff run? So here's what's going to happen in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Just giving you some tape to rewind. Okay. It's going to be all about matchups. That, that it's really going to be all about matchups. The only team that's distinguished themselves are the Milwaukee Bucks. They're the only one. Everybody else, it depends on who they're playing, whether they're going to advance or not. Yep. And we just talked about the Sixers. And on paper, they're about to have two All-Stars. But when I look at these standings, they six. Mm-hmm. So they're a perfect example of this inconsistency for a talented team, yet the resurgence of teams that just give me effort on a nightly basis. The Celtics have talent and give me effort. They have two All-Stars, and Jalen Brown was just player of the week yep. in the conference. And then you look at Indiana, look at Miami, look at Toronto. Like, those teams going to show up and play hard every night. Victor Oladipo is back for Indy. We just talked about Jimmy Butler. Pascal Siakam with the Raptors. So it all depends on matchups and who's going to advance to play against the Bucks in the Easter Conference Finals. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.